Welcome once again to Corey's Costume Corner! <laughs> With this month, we will reveal who are you behind the mask? I am me, I think. In today's lesson, we'll learn the kind of things that God wants you to think on. And it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're a boy, a girl, the Easter Bunny, Stormtrooper, a pineapple, a strawberry, Santa, hot dog, turkey, a snowman, a polar bear, whatever this is, a different kind of snowman, a banana, Mario, in the Paw Patrol, a football player, a soldier, a little baby. Whoever you are, God wants us to focus on what is true. And when you're truthful in what you say and what you do, that's called having integrity. It says in God's word, whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. That's Proverbs 10, 9. So what do you focus on? I'm gonna focus on this Bible lesson. It's not weird, this is how I focus. Got a blank to get my focus good. It helps to bounce. Hey guys, I'm Lawson, and hold it. Lawson? Lawson? Lawson! <laughs> hey, sorry about that. I just had to save a puppy from being hit by an oncoming Mack truck. Okay, um, truth is, uh, <laughs> I was about to lose a bid on this really cool archery set from eBid. Sorry. You know what, I think I need today's story too, actually. Uh, but anyways, I heard it from this kid, Elijah, who's in my cousin Noah's martial arts class. Now, Elijah's been training for a couple years. A little jujitsu, a little taekwondo, a little kung pao, chika! Okay, I did not stretch this morning, folks. Now, Elijah's about to test for a green belt, but what he really wants is to be friends with the two coolest kids in the dojo. Rhett and Quinn. Everyone wants to hang out with these guys. And Elijah's been trying to get their attention by cheering them on. Kick, strike, win, woohoo! And by bringing snacks to share, like tons of snacks. And then on a tournament day, Rhett and Quinn actually invite Elijah to sit with them during lunch. And Elijah's like, yes! He's so excited, he's over the moon. And Elijah's determined to fit in with Rhett and Quinn. When they sit, he sits. When they take a bite, he takes a bite. And when they laugh, Elijah laughs. <laughs> but then, Rhett and Quinn start talking about this new kid, Jed who's never done martial arts before. Red says, he's pathetic. Quinn adds, he can't tell a block from a strike. And Red points out, he doesn't spar, he wiggles. Jed gets all red, like he's trying not to cry. And Elijah feels terrible for him. But then, Red and Quinn look at Elijah to see if he's laughing too. Elijah's so tempted to laugh too, so they'll think he's cool. He tries to think of something funny he could say about Jed. I don't know, maybe like, Jed looks like my great aunt Lucy trying to water ski. Rhett and Quinn are still waiting. So Elijah finally takes a deep breath and he says, don't make fun of Jed, he just started training. Rhett and Quinn roll their eyes, but then Elijah just picks up his lunch. Then he just goes over to Jed and he says, hey, sit with me for lunch. Then Jed and Elijah enjoy lunch together and practice some more Kung Pao chicken. Whoopa! Whoopa! So kids, never take your great aunt water skiing, but do always remember that integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. 
Hey mom, do you think I'd be any good at martial arts? You want the truth? I can't handle the truth. You know what? Maybe not. Okay, thanks. Anyways, you, I am gonna go stretch, you guys. I will see you next time. Hey kids and preteens, thanks so much for joining us online. Hey, I wanna do a quick experiment with you, okay? So on the count of three, we're gonna close our eyes, okay? And do exactly what I say. One, two, three. Okay, my eyes are closed, are your eyes closed? Okay, I want you to imagine with me for a sec about purple elephants. That's right, purple elephants. Imagine what they look like, imagine how they move. Do they make the same elephant noise like who knows? You're imagining it, it's in your mind, whatever you want these purple elephants to look like, okay? Now open your eyes, okay, open them, all right? Now what I want you to do, I want you to stop thinking about purple elephants. Just stop it, okay? Stop thinking about how purple they are, stop thinking about how elephanty they are, just stop it. Did you do it? I don't know about it, okay? Because I bet you're still thinking about purple elephants. But if you were able to think about something else, the only way you could stop thinking about purple elephants is if you replaced it with something different like pink pandas or green camels. These are fun things to do with silly things like purple elephants, but what about the moments in our lives when we have negative emotions or feelings or thoughts and we just wanna consume ourselves with what is untrue? How do we start thinking about what is true and what is positive? So what we wanna do is we wanna show you that the Apostle Paul actually answers that question for you while he's riding in the back of a police vehicle, right? Wrong, cars weren't invented back then? Okay, okay. Well, I have an officer right behind this camera. If I do something really bad, you know what he's gonna do? He's gonna put me in handcuffs. I've bricked, I broke the law, he's gonna put me in the back of his police vehicle. Maybe he's gonna turn on the sirens. Wee, 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 wee. He's gonna take me here at the Plano prison where I'm at right now, okay? And uh, there's gonna be brick walls, there's gonna be steel cold bars, people are gonna be wearing orange jumpsuits. It's one of the worst places imaginable. We're talking about prison, and that's where Paul is encouraging the church to think about what is true while he's in prison. Can you believe that? That's amazing. And you know what? Paul did nothing wrong. Paul did nothing deserving of prison. He just shared the message of Jesus Christ, but it was illegal back then. And in some places all around the world, it's illegal to still share the gospel, to plant churches, to allow the name and cause of Christ to spread like wildfire. But Paul loved Jesus and obeyed God so much that he did it anyway, even if it left him behind bars. So the Apostle Paul is writing the book of Philippians while he's in Rome under house arrest, being guarded day and night. And he has a Roman soldier chained up next to him you got to imagine that he had feelings of fear, of disappointment, of loneliness. But you know what he says at the very beginning of the book of Philippians? That I'm in chains for Christ. And you know what, kids and preteens? I bet you've been fearful. I bet you've been disappointed. I bet you've been lonely, especially with this coronavirus craziness. This virus has literally and digitally gone viral. COVID-19 pandemic, just think about it. We fear for our lives. Am I gonna get sick? Are my parents gonna get sick um, from this disease? We've been disappointed, like COVID has caused this stick of dynamite just to explode our plans. Boom, there goes camp. Boom, there goes sports. Boom, there goes hanging out with my friends. And because of the shutdown, I can't see my friends, therefore I'm super lonely. But do you remember what Paul said to the church, how he encouraged them in Philippians Chapter four, verse eight, he says, finally, brothers and sisters, kids and preteens, that's you and me when we place our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So obviously the Apostle Paul had to be fearful and disappointed and lonely while in prison, but he didn't let his feelings, he didn't let his circumstances get the best of him. Instead, he didn't think about those things. He thought about all these things. Whatever is true, whatever's noble, 
whatever's right, whatever's pure or lovely or admirable, excellent and praiseworthy things. Those are the things he thought about and he encouraged the church to do the same and he encouraged every follower of Jesus to do the same as well. If you just focus on the negative, you can't think upon what is true. Paul could have just been super discouraged while he's at house arrest and just just feeling bad and just, you know, just having an awful day. But instead, he was used by God to pen the book of Philippians to encourage the church of Philippi to keep going, to think upon what is true. God still used him because he chose to change his perspective on what was untrue to what was true. To think not upon those negative things, but think upon the positive things that God wants us to consume our minds and our thoughts and our attitudes and our actions with. So preteens, kids, I want you to realize that Jesus did this far better than any other man has or will ever do. Jesus knew what was true. He knew what his death would accomplish, even though he would go through excruciating pain of dying on the cross, but he knew what that would accomplish. He knew that he would rise victoriously from the grave on the third day. He trusted his father. He did what was true. And so kids and preteens, I want you to think about our bottom line. With God's help, we can focus on what is true. And so as you go about the rest of your week and weekend, talk with your parents or your siblings, your Zoom life group leader, whoever you wanna talk about this question with, think about this question. What do you tend to focus on? Kids and preteens, it's been great opening up God's word with you. Love you, see you next week.